All right, it is 7 p.m. So I am going to call to order the Hingham School Committee meeting of Monday, April 6, 2020. This is a remote meeting being held via telephone conference call. Uh, this meeting is being held remotely by telephone as an alternate means of public accent access, sorry, pursuant to an order issued by the governor of Massachusetts dated March 12th, 2020, which suspended certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all telephone communications during this meeting may be recorded by the town of Hingham in accordance with open meeting law. And then just before we get into the agenda, I wanted to take a moment, um, if there's folks on the call, and then also for our school committee members, to begin tonight's meeting to just again express the gratitude of the Hingham School yes. Committee to all of the stakeholders of the Hingham Public Schools. Um, sorry, can you guys hear me? I'm getting yeah, some, yeah. Okay, sorry, yeah. I'm getting some feedback. All right, so I just wanted to point out that there has been an incredible level of consideration that has gone into developing a very thoughtful, realistic, and equitable, equitable plan for learning during this extraordinary time, thanks to our central office leadership team, our principals, our assistant principals, our resource, resource teachers, as well as our department heads. And the faculty, particularly Carolyn Ferris and Lauren Sioka, for all their work on the PD around remote technology. This amazing team has come together and worked tirelessly and selflessly over the past three weeks to develop a comprehensive learning plan, comprehensive learning plan under incredibly trying, stressful, and unprecedented circumstances. I'm not sure that any of us who haven't been in the room where it happened can ever fully appreciate all the work that went into the development of this plan while simultaneously dealing with the physical, emotional, and mental strain of a global pandemic that is overwhelming our families, our friends, our colleagues, and our community. So on behalf of the school committee, I wanna thank you for all your work. And then on behalf of the district, I would like to thank our parents and our community for your patience, your support, and your compassion for the district leadership, faculty, and staff during this unnerving time. The past three weeks have been long and the stress on all of us is pal palpable. And yet we have seen incredible levels of kindness and caring from our parents and our community, which has helped fuel the passion and drive of our leadership and our leadership team and our educators. We know it is not easy to manage work and home and family all under the same roof at the same time. And we know it's not how it's meant to be. And yet in spite of it all, we're making the best of it and our best self because of it. And finally to our students from K through 12, make it a little choked up here, folks. Um, we understand how much has been lost over the past few weeks. Classroom birthday celebrations, field trips, essential services, milestones, sports seasons, spelling bees, and most importantly, your connection with friends, classmates, and teachers. We know that remote learning cannot replace being in the classroom. We know you only have one first year of school and one last year of school. We know we cannot replicate what has been lost, but what we hope that when you, what you have found, which is a common purpose to slow the spread of a deadly virus on, for the good of other people, will be one of the greatest lessons for your generation. So thank you everyone for indulging me with that statement. Um, we'll move on to 2.1, approval of minutes. We've got minutes of the school committee meeting of the education subcommittee of advisory committee and selectmen on March 3rd. Uh, okay. Carlos, go ahead. Yeah, with that, I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes of the school committee meeting with the education subcommittee of the advisory committee and board and selectment held on March 3rd, 2020. Oh, Carrie, do you want a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Uh, sorry. Uh, all those in favor, and uh, sorry, because we're doing this on the phone, I'll do it. I'll do a roll call vote for everything. Ness? Aye. Libby? Aye. Liza? Aye. Ed? Aye. Carrie? Aye. Carlos? Aye. And I am an aye as well. Thank you, those are approved. Just so everyone knows who, if you can picture this right now, I have to, I close my eyes and like picture the order we all sit in. <laughs> when I'm calling your name so I can like picture your faces. 2.2 uh, minutes of the school committee meeting held on March 23rd. 
I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes of the school committee meeting held on March 23rd, 2020. This is Carrie, I'll second. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, Ness, or sorry, any discussion? Ah. Okay, I think there's no discussion, so Carrie. I mean, sorry, Ness. Aye. Libby. Aye. Liza. Aye. Ed. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Carlos. Aye. And I am an aye as well. Hi, right, thank Michelle, you. Can you Michelle, yes. can you just remind everyone to please mute the uh, phone, please? Thank you. Yes, if folks on the line want to mute their phones. Um, I know it's hard because if we're taking roll call votes, but. Um, all right, so uh, item three on the agenda is questions and comments. The Hingham School Committee encourages community engagement and we welcome questions and comments as agenda items are discussed. Uh, but we do have time set aside at the beginning of the meeting if there's anyone on the line who had questions or comments for the committee about something not on the agenda tonight. So I will give it a minute if you are in the audience listening in and have a question or comment, let me know and I'll recognize you. All right, not seeing anyone. And Pam, you can't tell if someone is looking to speak, can you? I cannot, but nobody's making any noise. I can okay. see that. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you are, we can. Oh, wait. For some reason, I'm seeing a name pop up on my screen. All right. I don't know if that's meaning somebody wants to talk. If you do, I'm terribly sorry because I don't know how to. I think it was me, Michelle. I had dropped the call, so I just called back in if it made a noise. It's got it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So <laughs> sorry about that. No worries. No worries. All right. So seeing nothing, if anybody has any comments, though, that are on the line and speak tonight, feel free to send me an email, um, ma or at hinghamschools.org. Um, all right, so we will move on to item number four, superintendent's report. Paul, you're on. Thank you very much, and it's nice listening to all of you. Uh, I miss seeing you, actually, and uh, this is a difficult way to do things, but uh, I, I appreciate hearing from all of you. Um, so I'm going to, I actually have some, some uh, written statements tonight that I want to read. First, on, the, uh, on our response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And first one, I want to say on behalf of the Hingham Public School Administrators, Professional and Support Staff, I want to begin the evening with a word of thanks to the entire school committee for your unwavering support and commitment to our public schools and staff. This is a historic and unprecedented time, and your leadership is also greatly appreciated. Please accept our sincere appreciation for all that you do as well and how you support all of us in our schools, our students, and our families. <clears throat> this closure, which began on March 13th, has been a long and difficult period for our students, families, staff, and administrators. We are navigating territories that have never been explored during a time of great uncertainty, fear, and unrest. Despite these difficult days, the very best of our district, students, and communities has shown clearly through. At the recommendation, recommendation of the Commissioner of Education, Jeff Wiley, the district provided uh, optional academic achievement, um, academic enrichment activities to our st students during the first three weeks of the closure. Approximately 10 days ago, Governor Baker closed all schools in the Commonwealth until at least May 4th, 2020. With that closure, the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education provided additional guidance and asked district to develop a remote learning plan for students through the May 4th period. Central Office Administration, school administrators, directors, resource teachers, and faculty all rolled up their sleeves and went to work for countless hours to develop Hingham's remote learning plan that was put into action just today. While we understand that no plan is perfect, we believe this plan developed will best meet the needs of all students during this very challenging and difficult time. The district leader team, leadership team meets multiple times per week and we will continue that throughout the duration of this closure. In addition, our faculty and staff have been fully engaged in preparing for the new delivery of instruction uh, during the closure as well. More specifically, many of our faculty have actively participated in professional development on the use of our online presence, 
provide instructional materials to students. Many of our teachers are juggling young families of their own at home while staying connected with colleagues and students. I am grateful for their professionalism and dedication to the students they serve. I want to say a special thank you for Dr. Lubilwa for ensuring that communications are continuously flowing to both staff and families. The communication from our office has been frequent with important information that has helped both staff and families throughout this crisis. We fully understand the importance of providing timely and meaningful information to our stakeholders, and we, will, we are committed to continue to provide these updates regularly through the duration of the closure. I want to say a thank you to all of our staff for going above and beyond the call of duty in this unprecedented health crisis. They have stayed positive and connected to each other, their students, and their families. I'm extremely proud of our staff and what they've accomplished during this time, and I'm honored to work with such dedicated and talented individuals. And finally, I want to say a thank you to our students and families. They are enduring so much at home, and yet many of them find time to reach out to me, administrators and staff, with words of encouragement that have helped us immensely. Those words mean so much to all of us and are also greatly appreciated. This is a difficult road we're on, and the times are very uncertain. I am, however, certain that we will make it through this together as one unified unit. Better days are ahead. And I look forward to seeing all of these families, our students, and our staff together in our schools very soon. Thank you. That's the, that's the update on COVID-19 response. Yeah. And the next one I have is I have the facilities report. And we'll just ask our people, I know that you've seen these, uh, please see the report in your uh, school committee packet. I'll not go over the, the work done, but I do want to say a huge thank you to all the members of our facilities and maintenance departments. They have done an amazing job of keeping our buildings clean and ready to go when we return from this very difficult time. Every single member of our team has been on call and ready to step up to the plate when needed. I'm incredibly appreciative of their efforts and commitment to Hingham Public Schools and to the Hingham community. And that's the end of facilities report. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, um, so do you want to move on to item five, communications? communications sure. 5 .1? Sure. Um, at the end of March, uh, we received the communications from the Massachusetts School Building Authority inquiring about our readiness to move forward with a foster school project during this unprecedented closure. Although we had the opportunity to, quote, unquote, push the project right. out a bit further because of the oh. current closure. Yep. Did you ask a question? No. I'll run down a few more okay? I okay. threw some stuff in the dryer. I think <laughs> people don't, if everybody could remember to put their phones on mute. A few comments, Kathleen. Five minutes. Go okay. Ahead, Sorry. <laughs> I'll work through it. All right. <laughs> um, although we had the opportunity to push the project out a bit further because of the current closure, I believe we were prepared to move forward as planned, even though some of the work may be done remotely uh, at the time being. That sentiment has been the same from the town perspective as well uh, in talking to other members of the building committee, uh, as well as our school committee members and, and town officials. We are moving forward as planned, and we had our actual our kickoff meeting last Friday, April 3rd, um, which went very well. The town administrator, chair of the select board, members of the building committee, school committee, and Hingham Public School Administration participated. At this point, we're in very good shape, and we're well on our way for the foster school project and, and getting that done uh, or the, the work that needs to be done to the MSBA on time. Um, so that's the end of my communications. All right, great, thank you. Um, I don't know if Emma joined us tonight. Pam, do you know if Emma joined? I did invite her, and there's a few phone numbers who I don't know who they belong to. Emma, if you're out there. Guess not. All right. Well, if you are, Emma, feel free to jump back in. Um, item 5.3, any other communications? Um, I do not have any. Do any other committee members have anything? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to item six, uh, unfinished business. 6.1, uh, just to receive an update on the operating and capital budget for fiscal year 21, if there is anything new. Paul, I'm not sure if there's anything to report. Yeah, I, I don't have anything horribly new, but I'll ask John to, to jump in here. 
Uh, yeah. Hi, Paul. Um, folks, thanks. Yeah, I, I, there's there's really nothing new. Um, you know, the past three weeks, there's been uh, no budget discussions uh, at all. Um, you know, I can only imagine, you know, what the impact of, um, of you know, this closure of the uh, United States really, for the most part, will mean, you know, for the last quarter of the year relative to any revenues for next year. Um, you know, I mean, the, the town would get shorted with some revenues, especially for like, uh, you know, permitting and for license renewals, for car leases, and stuff like that. I mean, recession or, you know, a, a, a stagnant economy really sort of puts a big damper on that. So I really can't speak to anything there. Um, as for FY20, of course, you know, there'll be some impact to us on our budget as well. Um, you know, a lot of it has to do with uh, refunds that may be due for full day K and um, for, you know, kids in action, for food service revenues being cut short as well as, uh, um, you know, the, probably the lack of athletic fees. So, um, you know, as we, as we proceed more, I'll be able to quantify those better and provide an update at a later meeting. But, you know, I, I just wanted to sort of make mention here so everybody's aware that, you know, there is a financial impact on this year's budget, and I can't speak to what there might be next year. Yeah, I think, um, you know, if I can add just one thing after that to, to what John just said, you know, as he said, you know, we're aware that we're going to have some impact on FY20 and, and I'm not sure yet what FY21 looks like, um, but we've been heavily scrutinizing, obviously, any expenditures at this time. Um, not that we're not spending money, we're certainly not in a freeze, um, but we want people to be aware that we are um, very aware of, of our financial condition and um, are, are heavily scrutinizing all of our expenses as, as uh, we spend money now. So just uh, that's the only update I really have to that. Yeah, no, that's a good point, Paul, of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm man we're managing very tightly. I mean, there's only the only POs that are passing are those that are absolutely essential for getting us by uh, this next period of time. All right, great. Thank you very much. Um, anybody on the committee have any questions about the budget? All right, hearing none, um, at our next meeting, we will vote on the budget number um, so that we are prepared to bring that forth um, when we get to town meeting, which just as a note for everyone has been postponed. Um, assuming everyone has seen that, I believe, I forget the date now, I believe it's June 27th. It is June 22nd. June 22nd, 22nd. thank 22nd. you. And the election is June 27th. That is right, thank you, Pam. You're welcome. So June 22nd town meeting, everybody. So we will have to adjust our, might have to adjust our meeting schedule to, um, to have a brief meeting before the town meeting on the 22nd. All right, um, under new business item seven, 7 7.1 is to hear an update on Hingham's remote learning plan. Um, Dr. Labilla, I believe you're gonna present the general education portion for us. And then Dr. Vinnis, you'll present the special education portion. Yes, that sounds great. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening, committee. Um, uh, uh, in the packet, you received the remote learning plan, which launched this morning. Um, and it starts with just a broad introduction. Given the closure due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education um, has directed school districts to develop a remote learning plan, which will ensure, to the extent possible, a continuity of the educational program as best we can. Uh, while recognizing uh, the variety of sort of equity issues that we have within the district relative to technology access and internet access, uh, Wi-Fi, as well as um, taking into account um, uh, the home life, right, that, that kids are in and the uncertainty and the anxiety that certainly must be there. Uh, for the plan, uh, we developed on um, the regular ed side, and, there, and I should say, Michelle, that both of the plans are complementary, meaning they sort of fit together nicely and they were developed intentionally that way um, as one instructional program uh, that served that uh, one that would service our kids with disabilities and one that would service our general population. Um, the, the plan is based in four guiding principles. Uh, so we first had to recognize that the plan had to focus on the holistic uh, overarching needs of the community, uh, focusing not only on academic growth and, and improvement, but also on physical health and safety and the nutrition and making sure that our kids are 
um, have meals, uh, have meals and um, have their social emotional as well as their mental health needs met. Um, ensuring equity. So it, that was at the cornerstone of all of our planning for the remote learning plan, um, as well as the establishment of connections and maintaining what a school is, which is essentially a collection of relationships. And that was really important to us. Um, the second okay. guiding principle really looked at um, learning through remote medium. So unlike online learning, our remote learning plan has opportunities for kids to both be engaged te te technologically, but also to be unplugged um, to have our instruction, uh, have the remote learning actually advance the, advance the uh, learning and the uh, content that kids are receiving, um, and as well as, again, to focus on equity and being thoughtful of the variety of kids from three years old to 18 years old who are with us uh, every day in school. The third guiding principle really focused on uh, a schedule that would ensure frequent contact uh, have opportunities for specialized contact and then op also opportunities for both um, additional support as well as enrichment embedded into the structure. And the fourth guiding principle was on feedback to students um, in that uh, teachers would be delivering sort of uh, critical feedback to, to students on their work that is submitted, um, as well as beginning the overarching, um, uh, developing an overarching understanding of grading and assessment. Um, as well as ensuring um, sort of a common understanding around our instructional expectations. Um, and so just to speak broadly, um, our instructional practices as a part of the plan were designed to be asynchronous. And there are a multitude of reasons why um, we went this way. Uh, the first is we had learned from, we had um, sort of uh, partnered with other districts in the, in the state who actually launched into synchronous online learning. And we were sort of learning from those districts where things did not go as planned or did not go as well. We actually partnered uh, with, with uh, schools in town. We actually had a great consult with Derby Academy that is actually running a, uh, a similar model for their kids, their students in grades K to eight. Um, and sort of pick their brain around particularly early childhood engagement. We really weren't as concerned about our secondary students online, where we really wanted to put a lot of our attention and focus, particularly the elementary team, was on our youngest learners, our preschool age students who are three and four, as well as our primary age kids in grades K to two. Um, now, that doesn't mean that there are not going to be opportunities for live synchronous connection. And I think that's a, 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 something we really wanted to, to be clear about with the community. Um, we had gotten a lot of feedback that people were looking for live synchronous instruction. The reality is when we balance this out over 4,200 kids across multiple, across hundreds of households across the community, um, not all families have individual device access for every single child um, in the home. And so that made uh, logistical planning uh, uh, really challenging in terms of how would we even launch this if we were to launch. Um, so we made the decision to keep our instruction asynchronous. Uh, but have opportunities um, for synchronous connection. Uh, the plan looks fairly similar across elementary and secondary. All of our faculty, and not just our classroom teachers, we also have to be thoughtful of our specialists, of our special educated special educators, as well as our related service providers, our adjustment counselors, our tutors, our paraeducators, our library media specialists, our nurses. Um, our paraeducators, everybody has a role in the development of this remote learning plan. Um, uh, both elementary and secondary on a similar schedule, although that is true for the, 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 this week where we launch, but going into next week, our elementary families can expect to receive their work for the week on Thursday, or, and it's actually going to be Thursday um, of this week because of the Good Friday holiday on Friday, um, but going forward, it would be on the Friday before the weekend where the week would begin, and that was based on feedback from our parents where our secondary students will maintain a Monday morning uh, release schedule. So new uh, activities and work are being pushed out to all of our students uh, remotely. Uh, again, elementary this week, actually this week, everybody was today or yesterday. I know, I know some teachers sent out materials yesterday, uh, but they had the deadline was by this morning around nine o'clock. Um, but going forward, again, elementary can receive, will be, be expecting to receive their, should be expecting to receive their work on Fridays. Uh, ahead of the week so parents can plan the week uh, more appropriately where our secondary students actually have the weekend to complete some work with everything being due for them on Friday and then new work being pushed out on Monday for them. 
Um, in general, the teachers are identifying um, sort of key concepts and core content learning, which they're introducing in carefully scaffolded and structured ways um, to add up to about half of the time uh, that kids would have been in school with us. So if they had a, a three-hour day, I'm sorry, a six-hour day, then they, they should expect to receive about three hours of work uh, per day across the five-day schedule. Um, and, and that's sort of the overview. We also um, had to really be thoughtful of when we do use live synchronous videos, um, the plethora of um, confidentiality concerns that, that present themselves with to be thoughtful of we're actually going into people's homes uh, and having to be really aware of sort of other things in the environment that could very, very easily interrupt the learning environment, learning situation. Um, and so we did give our teachers um, access to professional development. And that was really our goal last week to get this up and running um, is to actually train our teachers in some of these remote learning tools um, for them to then implement for the launch as of today. Um, and so that's a broad overview, which I'm happy to um, sort of pause there and take any questions that I could be a little more specific about. I will say that um, uh, our teachers received the remote learning plan in its final form last Thursday, and then uh, an, an, a version went out on Friday to our, our parents and our community members uh, to give them an overview of the plan itself. But it, 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 but it didn't have as much detail that the teacher version did when they got into sort of schedules and planning and what should be happening across multiple days of the week, where the parents got more of a holistic view and a sense of what uh, the different members of our education community would be engaging in over this period of time. So I'm happy to pause there, Michelle, or if you want to go on to Suzanne, just to see if there's any questions. Does anyone, before we go on to Suzanne, does anyone have any questions for Jamie? Michelle. All right. Oh, yep. This is Cynthia oh. Galco. I'm, is, are, you, oh. are you allowing questions from non-committee members? Um, I can, yes. Do you... Um, yeah, I guess, yeah. Uh, Jamie, do you mind taking questions now or would you prefer to do Suzanne's presentation first? Oh, no, I, I'm, I'm fine to take them now if, you, if, that, if that's agreeable to you. Oh, yeah, that I'm is fine. agreeable to me. So, um, Cynthia, go right ahead. Just a question for clarification. Jamie said um, for secondary, the work was going to go out on Monday mornings and then be due Fridays. Um, but how does that encompass a weekend? I thought I heard you say that was going to encompass a weekend. Yeah, so the work is technically due on the Friday of the week, but the kids were, most of the teachers have told the students that if they need the weekend, they just need to let them know and they could have it actually due on Monday. Got it. Okay, so, so just you need to let the yeah. teacher know. Okay. Okay, Correct. Great. thank yeah. you. Yeah, so it's technically due Friday, but if anybody needs extra time, because we also have to be really thoughtful, right, of sort of what might be going on in individual people's homes uh, with people being sick or um, sort of, um, whether they're available that particular week given any other issues that might be happening. So that's where we wanted to give a level of flexibility. Um, so it's a technically a five-day week, Monday through Friday, but if needed, all the student needs to do is ask their teacher and they should be given an extension to the following Monday. All right, thank you. No problem. Thanks, Cynthia. All right. Um, all right. Uh, any other questions for Dr. Labillawa? All right. Then we'll move on to Dr. Vinnis' presentation of the special education portion of the plan. Hi. It's so nice to hear all of your voices. It makes me, you know, sad to be um, home here for the fourth week. <laughs> <laughs> um so I'm going to build um, really off of what Jamie was speaking about. Um, I participated, as did um, members of my team, in the development of the remote learning plan so that special education was well represented, um, especially for those students who are able to access grade level curriculum but require some accommodations or minor modifications. It gives um, you know, the expectation to the ent entire faculty that those things are considered. So when um, I decided to write the manual, it was really um, more of an effort to try to explain all of this to all of my faculty with a common and clear message uh, so that they understood um, what it was that we were um, tasked with doing. Um, and what we are tasked with doing is 
um, trying to change a teaching methodology that's existed for um, hundreds of years uh, and altering really what's considered this feedback loop that um, special education providers rely on so heavily. So I really felt like um, part of my duty was to help them understand um, what that was and then how to um, really digest that and then come up with opportunities to include that as part of the asynchronous learning that Jamie was referring to. Um, and so we've been um, discussing it as a department. Um, it's also reflected in the procedural manual um, that there are different ways to ensure that feedback is occurring um, despite ability. Uh, so that's a large piece of the manual. And then um, there are procedural um, items um, to reassure them that FAPE is not defined um, the same as it typically is uh, in other circumstances, um, that they are expected to communicate frequently, um, but also respectful of the wishes of the family if they aren't interested in having frequent connection. Um, they should um, be respectful of that. Uh, it's also made clear to them that there isn't an ability to do one-for-one -one teaching instruction, whether it's asynchronous or synchronous. Um, it would be impossible for any related service provider to be able to um, replicate block scheduling that occurs during the school day uh, when they're home. Um, often in similar circumstances to the rest of us with children and sharing office spaces with spouses. Uh, and then it also goes on to discuss um, what types of virtual meetings um, I envision there being, and it's certainly not an exhaustive list. Uh, and if you um, noticed on the very front page of the manual, it says that it's volume one. Uh, because as things progress and if we are actually out of school longer, I would expect there to be new guidance from the DESE and I wanted to be able to build on what it is that we already have going. Um, so for fear of not getting something out to everybody in advance, I wanted to make sure that I covered what we knew now and um, left things open to add to it if uh, it came to that. So there are, you know, any family can have a meeting, a virtual meeting. Um, we expect really specific um, social norms to occur in those circumstances, understanding um, what that means for our school staff who have to also be um, visible in their own homes with their own uh, home challenges. Uh, and that you can have a meeting and it doesn't necessarily have to be an IEP meeting. Um, so I laid out a couple of different um, types just to make sure that we're all communicating on the same page. Um, and then there's a note about really it's not a great time to even think about adjusting or amending any IEP in this time of crisis. Um, it's we're better off with stay put and then to come back and reassess and determine what it is our students require. So that's it in a nutshell. I'm more than happy to answer any questions about it. But as I said, you know, it is volume one. Um, we know that there are many things that we have yet to address, such as extended school year, compensatory services, how paraprofessionals are going to be utilized, um, and things uh, such as that that was outlined in the communication to families. So this is certainly not complete. All right. Thank you very much for that presentation and all the information um, that you put together and as well as, of course, all your work on this. Are there any questions from the school committee members on the plan? So this is Carrie, I have one. Okay, thanks Carrie, go ahead. Yes. So are the special education teachers reaching out to individual families um, just meeting this is a, it's a little different on the special education side because IEPs are individual. Um, is there a plan in place or are you working on something to make sure that all the families are reached out to? Um, we have um, we've actually been uh, having the teachers document since day one of the closure. And since this new initiative of uh, ensuring that um, there are excellent attempts being made at delivering service, 
we're creating a district-wide documentation folder, uh, but we have to be really careful about um, how it's designed so that um, information doesn't get lost. Uh, but to answer that your question um, is yes, um, we need to monitor um, how students are being serviced during this time if progress reports are not part of the equation at this point. Okay, great, thank you. All right, thank you. Any other questions? All right, well, seeing none. Um, Again, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Libilawa and Dr. Venice. Again, appreciate all your work on this plans um, of you and your teams and for presenting the plan to us this evening. Um, all right, we can move on to new business item 7.2, uh, which is to discuss the fiscal year 20, so this school year calendar, and to act as appropriate. Dr. Austin, do you want to run? Yeah, the thank you for that. Yeah, and if I can just follow up on that, just uh, just a statement at the end of the last one. I think what you had you had said initially, just to, to finish up on the remote learning plans, just for a second, if you don't mind, Michelle. Um, sure. You know what you had said at the beginning to talk about the um, the amount of work that went into that, and and I want to say at any given time, we had um, 30 people working on these documents all at the same time, which is really remarkable when you when you think about the process. Um, and outside of that, literally 100 or more people, you know, teachers having input, et cetera. Um, it, it was a remarkable process. And, and uh, again, I just want to thank everyone for their work on that and recognizing that there's no such thing as a perfect plan. Uh, I think given the, the time that this was a week uh, to, develop, to develop such a thing is an incredible uh, accomplishment. So once again, just want to say thank you to them. Um, now, as we move into the discussion of the FY20 school calendar, so from the, from the beginning of this closure, um, the commissioner of the DESE has been clear that any lost days to the closure, regardless of how long it was going to be, would not have to be made up past our scheduled 185th day. Um, that day for us is June 23rd, including the Holy Week holiday um, this Friday and all of April vacation. Now, during the closure, um, the teachers have stayed engaged in communicating with students, providing engagement activities, and participating in grade level um, department and school meetings. In addition, our, many of our school staff participated in multiple professional development opportunities, provide online learning activities, which began today in our new learning plan. To continue the momentum as we now have with our students who are engaged in the remote learning plan, uh, I am recommending the school committee um, consider a change of the approved 2019-2020 um, calendar by canceling April vacation. This would create four days of instruction during that week as um, the 20th is a state holiday on Patriots Day. Um, I believe the teachers are uh, want to work with the vacation. Um, and just last week, we did receive uh, new guidance from Commissioner Riley that confirmed if schools close during the uh, choose, I'm sorry, choose to work during April vacation, the district does not have to work beyond the day 181. I say work, um, that would be our last day with day 181 if they choose to do April vacation. Um, so that is my recommendation to the school committee to consider uh, April vacation as a working, um, working week. All right, thank you. Um, does anyone on the committee have any questions about this? I do, it's Libby. Hey Libby, go ahead. Hi, hi. so if we did work through April vacation, what would be the last day of school? June 17, uh, that's assuming, I, I wanna be clear, that's assuming there's no other canceled day for other reasons. I, uh -huh. you know, and okay. during closure, I can't imagine it wasn't, but, but that's assuming there's no other closures, uh, so it would be June 17th. As opposed to June twenty third. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, this is Liza. I have a comment. Um, I think this would be a very productive move on our part. Um, the students are just starting to learn, and for them to in a new way, and for them to only go two weeks and then 
have an entire week off, I think would really just, um, you know, crush the momentum. Mm -hmm. um, and then they only have a week after that until if, if we go back <laughs> um, May 4th. Um, and I also think that if, if for some reason, you know, we're even home for the rest of the year to keep kids inside in a house till June 23rd, um, just extending it out at the end is going to be challenging. Um, so I'm glad to hear that the teachers would be in favor of this. And I have heard of several other districts that have made this move as well. Um, so I would support it. Thank you, Liza. Uh, uh, this is, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I just, I agree with Liza on that too. And uh, because the remote, it takes, you know, developing all the remote learning is challenging and it's, it's going to be, it's a work in progress and I'll, people will continue to perfect it. It would be nice to not um, kill the momentum by uh, canceling and, and um, having the kids unengaged for a week and then have to pull them back in. So I, I think it's a good idea too. Yeah, and this is why I, I would just add the governor told us he, we're not allowed to go anywhere anyway. So um, <laughs> we all got to be in our house. Might as well keep people busy. Right. True. So this is Ed. Makes sense. I'm in favor of it. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments from the committee? <clears throat> Does someone, would someone like to make a motion? Because we have to vote on this. Um, as a supplier, I'll make a motion to uh, amend the fiscal year 20 school calendar to continue learning April 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, and to have the last day of school be June 17th barring any unforeseen additional days we have to cancel. This is Carrie, I'll second. Thank you, Liza and Carrie. Any further discussion? Hearing none, the roll call. Ness? Aye. Libby? Aye. Liza? Aye. Ed? Aye. Carrie? Aye. Carlos? Aye. And I am an aye as well. So that is unanimous. Great. Thank you, everyone. Um, Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, all right, 7.3. Oh, believe it or not, folks, to receive and discuss the draft of the calendar for next school year. <laughs> so in your <laughs> packets, uh, it's already that time of year to start thinking about next school year. Um, all right, so all right, so this is a new format here. It's all yes, it is. <laughs> love, it, love it. They hang a logo in the corners. I like it. Um, Paul, do you want to give us your thoughts on the proposed calendar for next school year? I'm sorry. What did you just say? I lost you. Did you say something to me, Michelle? Yes. Sorry. I was just saying. Did you want to just walk us through some of the thoughts on? the calendar for next school year. For the yeah, I'll have to get back out of, let me get into that calendar as well. I've got to move it here. Um, That's okay. I know it says that it looks like the first day of school would be the Tuesday following Labor Day, which is typical. And then uh, closing schools on Tuesday, November 3rd for the election. Um, yes. Touch the request of the town office. The, um, the town clerk, and we had accommodated a similar request. This was that just a couple of weeks ago <laughs> um, this year when we had the Super Tuesday primaries. Mm -hmm. So you were going to yeah. close it again for yeah. November. Okay. Yeah, I think, and everything else is pretty much um, similar to what we already have. It's a little different format for you, and um, hopefully simplified um, format, make it easier to read, um, and and give you a chance to to kind of take a look at it over time. I, I have it pulled up on my screen now, so sorry about the delay. 
Um, yeah, but basically we would start that Tuesday after Labor Day um, as, as we've done traditionally. Um, and then you see the, the holidays around, uh, particularly in the November, the December holidays, um, February vacation is always during that week, April vacation that week. And then our last day of school um, would be um, the 21st. And I believe that's with the five uh, days uh, for snow days already already in the, um, I'm sorry, they're not. So the last day would be actually the 28th of June uh, with the five snow days if we needed to make those up. And high school graduation will be uh, June 5th, this next year. Can you hear me okay? I wanna make sure I didn't lose anybody. Yeah. Okay, Sorry. Yep. I wanna make sure, thank Sorry. you. No, I was saying it's okay. so June 28th is the last day with snow days, which feels late. With snow days, is, yeah. right. Which yeah. is late, but Labor Day's late this year too. Labor Day is very late this year, yes. So we're going to help for oh, no snow. Oh, yeah. the, the June fifth, the June fifth uh, high school graduation. Um, that's back to the mornings, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Back to the morning. That's this is Liza. I thought graduation. No, I, I, we moved yeah, it back Liza's, to the evening. Liza's right. That, that was moved yeah. up last year because of the the um, tournament, right? But then we, it, I did that. The goal was to put it back to five o'clock. Oh, I, my apologies. I had it reversed on what I knew. I'm sorry. You're right. It was it's returned to what it was in the past. Oh, yep. <clears throat> uh, this is Liza. I have a question on. Um, I, I like the new format. Um, I think it's great. Um, uh, I'll send some graphic comments another time. But could you explain to me what? ESC early release middle and high school conferences. That's I never knew you could do conferences at the high school for early release days. So, they, they, so that should be adjusted, Liza. That there it's okay. early release for conferences for elementary, and then secondary has a professional day. That's what I thought it was. So yeah, yeah then. Um, yeah, that's going to be really confusing for people. So, um, that that would be a good thing terminology yep. to change. Well, that is it. Yeah. But I'm not missing anything. <laughs> no. All right. Um, any other questions or comments? Go ahead. Well, I'm just going to say, you know, we, we don't have to vote on it this month um, right now, but, you know, certainly just let us know. Just email Pam and I with any comments you have, or Jamie, um, with any comments you have on it, and we'll take a look at it in the calendar. Um, we know it's a different format for you, so take a little time to, to familiarize yourself with it. All right. Thank you. Um, that makes sense. We like, we like our traditions here in hand, but we like new things yeah. too. So. <laughs> <laughs> we need to digest it. Absolutely. <laughs> I have to shake them up for you now and then. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, all right. Any, uh, does anyone else on the committee have any comments about the draft calendar as of right now? To Paul's point, we can, if you have individual comments or questions as we sort of look through it, we can bring them up and then we can vote maybe at our next meeting. All right. Good well, idea on voting at the next meeting. Okay. Let's get it out there early. Right? Because, yeah, I think so too. People like the earlier the better, I think. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Um, Pam, can you make a note of that to put that on the agenda for the next meeting? Um, all right. Uh, I'm going to move on then to 7.4, which is to receive a recommendation from the administration for preschool fees and kids in action fees for fiscal year 21 and act as appropriate. Uh, so there's copies of the rates. Uh, in the packets. John's going to explain what we have in the packets. Um, so John, do you want to? 
explain what we've got here for your proposal? Yep, I'm muted. You can hear me, I assume? Yes. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> I'm getting back. So the uh, first one, if we can talk about the um, pre-K rates first, um, that's the uh, it's the just the Excel spreadsheet that's in your packets. I've shown rates from 2015-16 up to um, 20, and then with the proposal of a two percent increase. Um, as you know, with we during the budget process <clears throat> this year, we've been uh, talking about increase. Um, uh, including in the um, integrated pre-K program, a full day pre-K class um, for, you know, five days. And, you know, so this these new rates, when you look down on the sheet, that yellow section is those new rates. So there's no comparable rates for those full day programs. Um, and Tony and, and Suzanne actually worked out uh, a, a number of these rates. They took the previous year's um, <coughs> rate and increase them by 2%. And then for the that, that four day, uh, and, and then the orange one that you see there is that they just created um, a structure so that it ends up all being equal. So in other words, if you have the 1357, that's a two day program, you take that, you know, one day of that and you just multiply by the number of days of the program so that they're all sort of consistent. So it's so much per day. And that orange one was just a correction Whereas, like a two percent on the twenty six ten would be somewhere around twenty six sixty, so um, I, I'm recommending that we just get it all in sync because I think they 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 picked up a probably a good inconsistency in the rate structure. And then for the four day program, it was um, it's a four full days, and then you see there's four and a half full days, <clears throat> which is really the fifth day. Um, although one day is going to be a half day, and that's um, in order to give those teachers the ability to participate in PD sessions. And on the days that they wouldn't um, participate in PD sessions, they could hold um, parent conferences. So we the those rates aren't totally in sync with that J rate. We didn't want to put them too high because the ultimate objective of this program is we think that it's going to entice more um, regular neurotypical kids to um, enter into the program so that we can maintain the correct ratios. So this first year start out, um, I think, you know, they, they would have suggested higher, but I said, why don't we lower those a little bit so that, um, you know, we sort of just uh, uh, double up the half day rate and, and then um, make another day on top of that for the half day so that we're not like throwing the rate so high that it may discourage people from participate in the program. And then, of course, I think after we take a look at it for a year, you know, we'll have another opportunity next year to take a look at this structure and see, you know, is it good the way it is? Are we getting the level of uh, participation that we really need from it? You know, and I think at that time we could probably make a decision as to whether we need to increase rates a little more to keep the revenues coming in to try to cover some of the costs or decrease so that we can increase participation. So, um, thoughts on that? Oh, okay. And then on the other page, so I'm looking at two, but you like, there's a second page. I just showed you some other rates. Like what if, what would the rates be if we did those at the 1% or what would the rate be if we did the 3%? And then, you know, what would the rate be if it was no change? And, you know, you think about the no change, it's like, um, you know, do we want to, uh, you know, should we keep the rates the same? Um, based on, you know, the need to get those neuro neurotypical kids. So I wanted to provide some options to the committee to take a peek. Our proposed um, and our recommended really is, you know, let's try the 2% and see where we go. Okay, all right. Uh, this is Carrie. Uh, Carrie had a question. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, it, it was just a question of reducing the five-day program to four and a half. Um, is there any concern that by doing that, it, the, pro, it, the goal originally, from what I remember, was that we wanted to try to attract neurotypical kids that um, wouldn't go, w were not going to the program just because of the schedule. Is there any concern that by having Wednesdays be a half day, that might deter people from um, enrolling? 
Uh, this um, is uh, Suzanne. Do you want me to take Suzanne. that, John? Yes, please. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I don't think so. I think um, when we were looking at other preschools, they have um, they have even less hours that they offer in a day. And because our students are coming from early intervention into the preschool, the preschool actually does quite a bit more evaluations than uh, other schools would have to do. And so we need to reserve them that planning time um, to be able to get together and do observations. And often at that early age, the PT, OT, and speech pathologist all go together because there are not developmental scales that will allow them to do some type of formal testing. And so we have to allow for some of that time to do that, to hold team meetings. And this will also give them the opportunity to participate in district-wide professional development that they have not been able to participate in thus far. Um, and so I think that there are any number of variables that, that may deter us from reaching our goal, but I have to say the work that the preschool has done thus far to increase enrollment has been incredible. Um, and I, I really feel like now that they know that this is such a significant goal um, and that they are responsible for achieving it, that they are really uh, on top of it and will succeed there. So have you gotten a lot of applications? For next year, um, they are actually waiting um, to vote on this um, oh, they that makes these, sense. Um, rates yep. to go on their application form. So they're yep. ready to go. They just need to have the updated uh, dates and um, rates. Sorry. Okay, great. Thank you. Oops, sorry. Um, anybody um, this else? is Liza. I have a go quick ahead, question. Yeah. Um, have we thought about if or could we think about if we find there are people that really need five full days, could Kids in Action pick up kids for that extra half a day of the neurotypical kids? I think that that's what they're already doing. I mean, they can't speak for Kids in Action unless, you know, if Jackie's on the phone, um, that would, you know, she'd be able to, to, to speak of that, but um, there are students who are already doing that. Yeah, but that's and a pre-K program. Action. Yeah, it's a pre-K program, uh, uh, Suzanne. So I think a pre-K program would present more difficulties because Kids in Action pre-K program really ends at mm. 1 o'clock. So it would be, right. you know, it just really wouldn't fit into the Kids in Action program to, you know, yeah. to pick that up. Oh, so yeah. what's the, what, what time does the preschool program end of the full day? Three o'clock, or whatever time each school gets out, or is it? Um, in, I believe it's three o'clock. I don't have that information in front of me at this very second. Um, I can get it for you, though. I think it would be similar slightly... hours to east. Is it a little later, Jamie? In a couple minutes earlier, maybe. Uh, I, so, I, so they're they're off by so the, so the they're off by just a little bit like maybe ten minutes or so yeah. so they come in after East is in so they don't get caught up in the in the in the drop off yeah, the and then they thing. release just before East releases so they don't get caught up in the dismissal right but I'm trying to I'm, I'm I am searching for the uh, times but I don't. I think you're right about that 10 minutes, Jamie. That's what's ringing in my head. It's like, it's a little bit, it's, yeah, it's, it's not, not the a lot, same. But... Yeah, it's it's a little early and a little a little later in the morning and a little earlier in the uh, right. day. Right, but then right, uh, cause the, the Kids in Action program gets out is 9 to 1.30, five days. So in some ways, actually, this program is complementary to the Kids in Action because Kids in Action is more expensive, um, but then this one at four and a half days would be less expensive, but same number, like probably total hours. Well, it's more hours, so maybe you will pick up people if you're looking at those two comparisons. I, I think we will pick up people, and then I think, you know, if we don't, I think we need to really rethink the structure of the preschool. Mm-hmm. So I just found it, everybody. It's um, 8.50 a.m. Uh, through 2.50 p.m. Well, that sounds like the right, is that, is it so it's a little early, right? It's, they get up, they dismiss at three, Jamie, right? What do they get in at nine? Mm -hmm. 
Or, no. Yeah, I think, so they're, they're yeah. a little bit before, and then, yeah, there's, it's the same total hours. They're just off 10 minutes. Okay. So they get in a little yeah. earlier, and they leave a little earlier. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, it's a, I mean, it's, it is a difficult, um, it, it's, it's hard to say, Liza, you know, I mean, until we try it, it's hard to say. I mean, you know, like me, I'm a supply demand type person. So I'm thinking, okay, well, I, I can't have too high of a price because I really need to get the people in. But, you know, and when, you, when you're throwing anything new out there, you just don't know. So you try to, you know, make it enticing and competitive. And it, it is, it's, it's below rates of some other, um, you know, the, the, the nursery and the pre-K programs within the town. And... <clears throat> You know, we need to get a little bit of experience under our belt, I think. And, yep. you know, perhaps if it wasn't working, maybe we could go to the committee at some point next year and say, hey, we, we need to do something different. We could provide no, refunds actually, if we had to with something, you know. But John, I'm, I'm actually, I think this makes sense now because when I look at the kids in action figures that you just gave us for your proposal for next year, and if we're going to be... Um, marketing to Hingham Public School pre-K program. It's going to be Kids in Action as an offering and this, this integrated preschool. And the integrated preschool with the full, the full program or the most mm -hmm. hours program is probably more hours. It is more total hours than the Kids in Action. Yes. Um, is. At a lower price. I looked at it. And right. so that would make sense to somebody. You know, there's pluses and minuses of either program, but you're at a lower price. Um, hopefully, you know, you'll probably draw people that way. So I think it's fine. Okay. So if everybody thought that this was the, you know, an appropriate rate structure and the right proposal at 2%, then, you know, I mean, I guess I would recommend the motion just be, you know, as proposed, uh, you know, on the um, the schedule uh, for the 2% increase rate. Right, because there's some adjustments in there. So it's not like not everything's going up by 2%. We're establishing some new rates. So. The easiest motion would be to just uh, suggest it as proposed at the two percent increase rate, so or something to that effect. Okay, this is Liza. I'll make a motion um, to set the 2020-2021 preschool rates at approximately two percent as proposed on the chart, two uh, percent above the 2019-2020 rates. And including the four day full day and the four and a half full day programs. All right. Do we have a second? Carlos, I'll second that. Thanks, Carlos. Uh, any discussion? All right. Seeing none, I'll take a roll call. Ness? Aye. Libby? Aye. Uh, Liza? Aye. Ed? Aye. Carrie? Aye. Carlos? Aye. And I am an aye as well. Thank you. All right. Um, go ahead. No, that's Sorry. great. Thank you very much. Okay, so that's um, that's the um, the pre-K, integrated pre-K program. So the... the the other charts are, are um, earlier in the packet there. So uh, for kids in action, and um, we have the 2019-20 schedule in there. So you have a basis of comparison. And then we also have the recommended um, for 2021. And, and Jackie Sansone, you know, Jackie's the new director. A couple of differences in the schedule. First off, she shaded out the three-day and the two-day for the um, before school and after school fees because really um, – the, the pre-kindergarten, because we only have a five-day program. We don't have two-day programs and three-day programs for um, for the um, pre-K in, in Kids in Action. And, you know, in, in doing this schedule, I mean, our rates are they're, they're good. 
They're still competitive. Um, on the 20 schedule down below, Jackie has, you know, provided some comps for um, area for other nurseries or daycare providers within the area. You know, she even goes and shows, you know, our hourly rate relative to um, some of the others and actually compares it to the Hingham Integrated Preschool. So you see that we, we I think we still represent a very good value um, to the residents, you know, with kids in action with this increased rate structure. And yeah, as Jackie and I were talking, I, you know, I sort of asked her, I said, well, you know, put something that's fair, something, um, some rate structure that you think is appropriate, you know, focusing in somewhere around the 2% area. So while all these may not be exactly 2%, they're, they sort of range between 1.4% and 2.5% where, um, you know, she went up like $100 or $50 on the program instead of, um, you know, going across the board uh, percentage. Um, and, you know, so as I looked at them, I thought that they, they sort of looked reasonable. Um, the before school fees up $50, that's a two and a half percent, um, increase, you know, for the $50, but it is by all means the lowest rate structure that we have there. And stuff. So, you know, looking at that, I thought that the fee structure that you put together was a uh, pretty good, um, and appropriate, and I would certainly recommend it. All right, thank you. Any questions about the Kids in Action fees? I might mention one other thing. So, you know, we, we, we really do need to get America back to work here, right? Because, you know, this program will, will have a very difficult time. And, um, you know, if, if not everybody's back working again. Um, it's, it, it, it is sort of like uh, important. It, it fills a, a good need, um, you know, within the community. And, you know, as you can see these um, rate structures here, um, you know, you just, just take that rate and multiply it by 20 people or multiply it by 30 people or, you know, 50 less enrollment or so, you know, in a 300 uh, person program. So you can see how the numbers can add up very quickly and it can in fact impact the um, the viability of the business, and you know, I would mention that this is one of the accounts that we do have a reasonable um, revolving account balance. And at this point in time, it'll take a little bit of a hit this year if we have to refund, but um, we should be still viable for next year. And I think we really have to keep our fingers crossed that the enrollment does in fact develop. So we we don't want to certainly go too high. Um, and, you know, having said that, I, I think it's important that we do generate some revenue so we can kind of keep the offsets that we have developed into our budget um, viable for a longer period of time. Um, but, you know, and, and we'll be okay next year, I believe, in any event. But I just think that it's important that we can, you know, keep an eye on, you know, what could happen to this program in the event that people aren't working. Okay. Any questions about the K fees or John's I, proposal? I just, uh, yeah. So just quick here. So John, so if I understand correct, uh, instead of the 1.5 percent, you are your recommendation that would just uh, increase by fifty dollars. Um, no, Carlos. I would say recommending the schedule because some of the programs, like the, for example, the pre-K, the um, Monday through Friday, that one's going up by. Um, hundred dollars that's two percent the seventy one hundred dollar program is going up by a hundred that represents a one point four percent increase the after school is going up by fifty dollars that re represents a two percent increase the before school is going up fifty dollars that represents a two and a half percent increase and the combines really going up a hundred dollars and that represents a one point eight percent increase it just, yeah, it's just that um, we I sort of want to, I like to keep the schedules rounded, you know, close to the nearest 50, you know, um, or excuse me, the, the close to the nearest $5 mark, you know, or zero mark. So, so in other words, I guess this schedule I'm thinking about, I, I think it's reasonable. I think Jackie thought about the rates and thought about, you know, which programs do we want to uh, entice people and, and, and get more enrollment in. And, you know, you want to 
reflect those uh, accordingly. So I thought it looked reasonable. Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> Thanks, John. Um, any other questions about the Kids in Action fees? All right, does anyone want to make a motion? Uh, this is Liza. I'll make a motion that we approve the rates of the Kids in Action program for 2020-2021 uh, to be set with an increase of approximately 2% as presented in the chart um, by John tonight. Thank you. Can I get a second? Carrie, I'll second. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, any discussion? All right, hearing none. Uh, Ness, are you in favor? Aye. Libby? Yes. Thank you. Liza? Aye. Ed? Aye. Nope, sorry, Ed? Aye. Carrie? Aye. Carlos? Aye. Aye, and I'm an aye as well. All right, that is unanimous as well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. You're welcome, John. Thanks for putting those all together for us. All right, uh, 7.5 to discuss the next school committee date, which was originally scheduled for April 27th before town meeting, which has been postponed, um, and then to act as appropriate. So the town meeting has been changed to June 22nd, the town election to June 27th, as we discussed earlier in the call. Um, I would propose so that we still maintain that scheduled meeting of April 27th because we do have some business, um, the budget, the calendar, um, and other business that may come up between now and there. We could get a good update from there on how the remote learning is going. Um, are people okay with maintaining our meeting for the April 27th? Yeah, Michelle, would we yeah, make that I at 6.30 right. or 7? Would we change the time to 7 or would we keep it at 6.30? Um, I don't know. I think maybe it's, I'm up, I'm open. I don't care. I mean, I'm indifferent. Okay. Right, we're all home, so it doesn't matter. Right? Exactly, right. We're all home. <laughs> Six thirty seven. Yeah, right. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah, remember it's it's still, co still coffee time at six thirty. Um <laughs> actually can this is Liza. Can we just keep it at seven? Just it, yeah. I don't know. It's just easier for me to just keep it consistent. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. That so that would be fine. changing that one to seven, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And the lo and the location, right? Yes, and the location will be <laughs> on the same bat channel that we're on right now. I think. Um, so, all right. Uh, let's just real quick. Ness, any problem with seven o'clock, April twenty seventh? No, that's perfect. All right, Libby. That's good for me. All right, Liza. That's good for you. Yes. Ed. Good. All right, Carrie. Works for me. All right, Carlos. That's fine with me as long as I can see everybody's face. I don't know if you're going to be able to, but all right, it's okay with me. Uh, administration, um, Paul, it's okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. I, yeah. Jamie? That, that's fine with me, yep. All right, thanks. Suzanne, is that okay with you? Sorry, I forgot I was muted. Yes, that's fine. Oh, that's okay. All right, and then John, that works for you? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, all right, that's great. Thank you. So we'll, we'll convene again on April 27th, not at the high school this time, but um, all right, other items not reasonably. So Michelle, yep, go I'm ahead. sorry, I, have a, I, re I just realized I have a question about, that's fine, but then um, when we have town meeting on June 22nd, will we meet as a school committee before then or just keep our regular date on the 15th? The Sorry. Week prior. Yes, we will still meet on the 22nd, really just for like a brief 30 minute pre, can you call it a pre game <laughs> for town meeting um, to just okay. sort of meet and like just, you know, discuss, um, you know, what we're, you know, if we, if we need to reply to any questions or anything like that. So really quick meeting okay. ahead of time. And are people okay yeah, with so that meeting the 15th yeah. and then again on Michelle, the 22nd? 
Yep. You usually stay in session for that, don't you? Stay in session for yes. town meeting. So Yes, we do, just in case yeah. there's anything we have to deliberate during right. the meeting. So yeah, I think we'll just add so we'll add the meeting of the twenty second. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Thanks for clarifying uh, that. Yes. Uh, Michelle, this slides, I have a question. So in the packet we also got the special reports calendar. Um is there any way we can do a Zoom video meeting and still have those presentations? So or are the Liza, teachers, I, is staff just overwhelmed? I think James. So my, my, if, if I can, I, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Jamie, go ahead, Jamie. So that was actually one of the requests that we were going to have. And I'll let Paul sort of address that. Sorry, Paul, go ahead. No, it's okay, Jamie. Either way, I, you know, I, I think there are a lot of people involved in those, Liza, and I think it would be incredibly overwhelming for them to do that. What we'd like to propose is that um, we put those on hold until summer, and then we can have them during the summer. Um, just, I think, logistically, that would just make a lot of sense to, to folks right now. That's, That's what fine. our request would be. Thank I you. was kind of wondering why it was in the packet, so, okay. So, uh, okay. Yeah, I think it, I think Thank it you. was there for just for us to discuss the proposal of sort of adjusting them uh, and moving them out a bit, just to give. I mean, the administration, the, the leadership team has been for the last month sort of all consumed on the remote learning and the engagement activities, and so I think um, that would just be a, a huge relief to them to sort of move that on, uh, move that. We're not putting it off. We're just w hoping to reschedule uh, to a more appropriate time. But I'm, this is Liza, I'm perfectly fine with that. I completely understand how much they've been doing and it's very impressive and I'm fine with moving it to another date. Thank you. Okay. Just want to of that. Yes. All right, thank you. All right. Um, all right, moving on to number eight, any um, items not reasonably known 48 hours in advance of the meeting? I do not believe that there are any. So I'll move on to number nine, uh, subcommittee and project reports, and I'll just go um, uh, down the, I'll just survey everyone and see if they have anything to give us. Uh, Ness, do you have anything? No, unfortunately not. All right, Libby, how about you? No, I have nothing to report. Um, Liza? Uh, no, salary negotiations we'll discuss in executive session. All right. Uh, Carrie? Uh, policy subcommittee is meeting remotely with Jim Hardy from MASC to go over Section B of the policy manual. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Ed, do you have anything? Sorry, skipped over you. I do not. All right, Carlos? None. All right, um, I don't have anything either. Um, I don't have anything either. All right, um, I would take a motion to adjourn to executive session. Uh, this is Liza. I'll make a motion to adjourn to executive session, not to return to open session for the purposes of discussing the memorandum of agreement with HEA Unit A regarding online learning and operating during state of emergency, the public discussion of which may be detrimental to the committee's bargaining position and to act as appropriate, um, discussing matters related to the HEA Unit A collective bargaining contract, the public discussion of which may be detrimental to the committee's bargaining session and discussing matters related to the HEA Unit A collective bargaining negotiations, the public discussion of which may be detrimental to the committee's bargaining position. Thank you. Can I get a second? This is Carrie. I'll second. This is, this is Libby. Oh. Oh, living in it. <laughs> all right, thanks, oh, okay, Libby. I'll second. <laughs> all right, thank you. All right, uh, so all in favor of adjourning to executive session, Ness? Aye. Libby? Aye. Liza? Aye. Ed? Aye. Carrie? Aye. Carlos? Aye. And I'm in favor as well. So thank you, everyone. We are adjourned to executive session. Um, everyone, uh, your instructions to log into the executive session meeting are in your emails. Um, so we'll see everybody in 
two minutes in executive session. Thank you, everyone, Thank you. for calling in and participating in our remote meeting. Good night. 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 Good night.